So now you go in and you draw your pitch diameters of your gears, which is like how they interact with each other. Yeah. So, like, you might start and it looks like this. Right, I got that one terribly. So there's your gearbox. And you know you have your, like, engine tubes down here. So then you start kind of dragging these around until they're in the spot where you want them which in the past has been this distance to the bottom, like you, like basically gearbox box to the bottom is like a quarter of an inch. Right. And that's like this plus the casing. So what you might add to this sketch is like, some bounding boxes, like you'll add in some concentric circles that show the outside of teeth, right. and then those will be on all of these. And then once you have all of those in there, you can start to go and now draw the outside edge of your gear box casing. And this is all still in like not fully defined sketches and solid but you set like your wall offset thickness. And that wall offset thickness might be like, I think normally the like wall thickness itself is like five or six millimeters. And then you leave like two, like one to two centimeters, one to two millimeters of clearance from the tooth of the gear. Mm -hmm. So. Wall offset thickness is the distance from the bottom of the tooth to the top. So, like, so, thickness of so the from here thickness. is like, here's like the uh, tooth, and then you have your outside, and here's your inner wall. So like from the edge of the tooth to the outside of the gearbox box might be oh. eight millimeters. Okay. So you'll put that offset distance in there, and now you have this, like you have these four circles that have that, and you'll take this and you'll drag it until that red circle is a quarter of an inch from the bottom, and you'll start playing around and moving things until you get a layout that you like, which might get you somewhere like. Wouldn't that height also be dependent on your half shafts? Out over here. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to. We that gear has normally been bigger than our half shaft. At, like, I want to say half shaft radius is four is like two inches, two and a half. That mm -hmm. gear is normally like. Wait, half shaft. Half shaft. Diameter. Radius. Diameter. Okay. Diameter. Of That'd the, be some beefy half shaft. Joint. No, of the of the CV joint. Wait, okay. why is that in, oh, because that's what plugs into the diff? Wait, I still am confused on to why that matters. Uh, because I'm talking about what it's been in the past, not with the diff. Oh, oh, like how they would just plug straight into the... Yeah. Yes. Right into okay, the fair. So you had to be concerned about that. Yeah. Um, I, another slight tangent concern when you're choosing your gears is there's a minimum distance between here and here. Like, um, and for PDOs right now, I'm doing optimization on choosing gears, so mm -hmm. there will be a nice write-up that has a lot of these numbers in it that I will... Ooh, nice. But I want to say this is like a minimum of like 100 and, like, call it 150 millimeters. And it's a, it, I'm not going to put a number on here. It's a minimum of a certain distance that depends on, you have your radius of... Um, the other consideration you have in here is you have your radius of your secondary. Right. And your radius of the secondary also needs to not cross that quarter inch. Right. So that gear is like fairly constrained in where it can be because it has to be far enough up on that circle that it is like that the C, that the radius of the CVT is at least that far up across the bottom. Yeah. Um, so that's where you start to get 
where I'm... Um, so those are like all different constraints that you start to get with the gear box. Mm -hmm. What is that minimum distance? Is that because of tooth meshing or? That minimum distance is because um, if you take the gear box and you have like the primary of the CVT is on here. Mm -hmm. Right. Or the secondary. So it's yeah. going to have some radius like that. Right, right. And then you have some half shaft and you don't want uh, CV to joint. Run into mm -hmm. And then you have to have your CVT guiding. Right. And you need some clearance here. So this is CVT guide. This is your secondary. And this is your half shaft pump. Mm -hmm. So you need some clearance in here, otherwise things are going to intersect with each other. Okay. So like that's where you get that this has some minimum distance that it needs to be. Right. Um, and you have to like play with all of these different things or like in your mind as you're choosing your layout. And a big thing next year is going to be like, what are these constraints and figuring out, um, I think, Everything's been on yeah, there yeah, yeah, so yeah. far. Just sure. So like, a, that's just a consideration that's going to have to come in next year of like, depending on which layout, you have to get it to a certain point for the prop shaft, and that's going to like lock in where this output is. Mm -hmm. And right. then like, you might be able to slide it laterally left and right, but you have like other things you have to care about. Right. Um, so. Questions on like layout and choosing like some of this type of thing. Is all this in CAD already in the previous design? Yes. Sweet. So all of this is mm -hmm. in the master sketch. Okay. Um, all of this happens in the master sketch. And once you get to like the layout you like, so this is like, this is where the gears are themselves and you have like, these are the pitch diameters. You have your teeth diameters, which I'm not going to draw, but you now have this curve of your casing, mm -hmm. or your like theoretical like casing at least needs to go to here. Mm -hmm. Minimum casing like width. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now you start thinking about actually how do I design like now you start going to the casing. So you're gonna do things like take like here. We don't want to go in there, so instead we're going to take this and we're going to go like that. Mm -hmm. And you might do a similar thing here. So now the casing goes like that rather than like following those lines. Mm -hmm. And what we've done in the past here is... Um, like curve that down a little? Or like something like that rather than following that because you have to maintain, so there's at least, machining. with machining, there's some minimum radius here. Right. Uh -huh. Based on your tool. Oh, is that what we were talking about earlier? With wire EDMing? Yes. So, wire ED, so when you're using an end mill, you can yeah. only get the size radius of the end mill. Yeah, okay. Normally, you want to use as big of an end mill as possible. So, if you can use a three-quarter, if Bruce can use a three-quarter inch end mill to do this, that's great. So, like, min radius would be, like, three-eighths inch plus point zero zero five inches because you don't want to have your minimum radius be the diameter of the tool. Mm -hmm. You want it to be a little bit bigger so it never lags in a corner and it always keeps moving. Okay, right. So you have your minimum radius here. Other things that you want to consider is um, like between this plane here and this plane here, Mm -hmm. um, whatever this line is, you want like those two black lines to have some like nominal angle. When you say nominal, what do you mean? So something that you can do with angle, um, so there's things in the shop that are like angle, I forget what they're called. They're, they're basically angle gauge blocks. And they come in 
Sign, bo sign bars. Sign bars, yes. So they're basically pieces that you can use if you need to fixture it that like uh like this and they're like mm, five degrees, okay. ten degrees, twelve degrees. Yeah. Like whatever those exist in is what you want to use here. It's because adjustable. what? It's adjustable. Some of them are. Yeah. I mean the sign bars we have are. Yeah. Uh so I'm thinking of something different then. Uh, I there's like the, the angled there's just pieces of angled stock and like not par the not parallels. Not parallels, parallels. Yeah. Yes, that's what they are. So you could theoretically use an angle, uh, a sign block which lets you do whatever angle, but it's a whole lot easier to use a like non-parallel parallel, parallel um, or an angled parallel. So that's like a design consideration here. And that, that lets you do what? Um, so if this is at an angle here and you have any features going in here, which we've done in the past, mm -hmm. you need to somehow be able to make this surface perpendicular to the mill. Oh, okay. So if you have an angled block here, you can just put this under the gearbox when you do it. Like, do you guys know what parallels are? Oh, that makes you, you put it on there and then that would offset Yeah, so that. you yeah, put like, mm -hmm. you have like, your little do box on here and then you like that way you can go in with like a drill press or something yeah, and go straight right. down okay that makes sense and now like okay. this line would be oh that oh that's here. why so like this might come down like that but now when you do that it'll be flat and you can easily take in your like little drill bit and drill holes so you'd like put that down and clamp it okay Something like that. So that's why you use, like that's an important feature here. So this is kind of the initial stages. Mm -hmm. The next stage I've always done is I've gone in and I've put in my bearings. So with all of like, or actually this is, we're still just in master sketch yeah. land. Okay. And at some point in here, you might have actually taken like back when it was just these red dotted lines, you might have taken it to be a CAD model and like just done some extrusions and started thinking about like uh, you have to do extrusions for the bearings. Yeah. Um, because like if you take the goo back from the top, um, yeah, this is how I've been drawing the goo. And am I still in the frame? Yes. Yes, just barely. Can always move it. Yep, but I just wanted to make sure it didn't need yeah. to be moved. So with the gearbox like this, um, you have, trying to be as color consistent as I can here. You have bearings here. Here. Would you like a better blue marker? Sure, if you. I'll get you one. Here, and then this one you put all the way out here. Oh, at the outside of the gearbox. Yeah, so the reason you do this and you have this one out further is you have your like that super, that, for, that helps stabilize the cantilever, right? That helps stabilize the cantilever. So you want to maximize this like maximize you want to maximize that distance. Right. Um because it like for cantilever. You found a very sharp file? So with this, now you start to beautiful. So like at some point you went to like the full 3D model so you can start looking at this. And you start like shaping that red line does not go there. <laughs> You started by shaping your gear box like this red dashed line. And then you added in things for the bearings. Mm -hmm. And this red thing might not actually go all the way out to these bearings. Like Yeah. 
Um, no longer the master. No longer. Yes. So this. Extruding from master sketch. Yeah. Making little gears mm -hmm. or little bearings. Is this is this before or after you? I'm assuming all the gear analysis, like as far as light weighting the gears and all that sort of stuff happens when you're doing that initial layout? It happens when you're choosing, like you choose your thickness of gears. Right. So mm -hmm. now you like, and in here you also like pocket out this. So like the first thing you'll do is you'll like extrude it to like the, the dashed line and then you'll like maybe make it a shell. So make F, like so a shell is like you basically remove all the material so all of your walls are six millimeters. Right. So I think I think we have had use the ones that we've used before, but I think we've used like where where this has been six millimeters, um, like here. I think it's been like four millimeters on like these walls. Wait. So you you ex you cut one side yeah. and then you shell. Yeah, so you'll like... Because you have that, that gear is at an offset from the rest of them, so you you do your extrude, cut off whatever profile from one side, and then you do the shelf from the other side. Well, I'm so... I'm confused where the shelf feature comes in. So... Well, the gears have to go somewhere. Shelf feature hollows out everything except a thickness on yeah. your pump. Yeah, and in here, you, you have two pieces because the gear box needs to clamp together. So you've already made it in two pieces. Oh, okay. So, so you, you have two pieces in CAD, and then you take each of them and you shell them from this interface. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. so you're just making some big coating and then you're making it hollow by shelling it. Yes. So do you, I thought you were shelling the gears themselves. No, no, no the casing. Okay. Like, at this point, I'm, like, the gears are in here to show, yeah. like, where things go, but I'm just talking about the casing. Yes. Okay. So you shell the casing, and maybe before you shell the casing, there's like some bearings that happen, and there's certain thicknesses for walls you need for bearings that are different than you need for the gear box itself. Um, there's definitely analysis that can go in there, but you can also like fall back on what's been done in the past mm -hmm. as like ways to just have a starting point. Mm -hmm. um, so, and probably before you shell, you do these like bearing things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at some point in all of this, you also go back to look at the master sketch and mm -hmm. think, where do the bolt holes go? And you could have done this initially. Um, that also works to do. And at some t sometimes it's easier to have the master sketch fully correct? It depends. You do want to make sure that your pathways between everything are solid so that if you update the master sketch, it updates everything else. Mm -hmm. Oh. Which is, so you define both halves of this gear box off the same master sketch. Okay. Because that ensures your bolt holes are in the same, like anything that you want to be the same on both of them, you define in the master sketch. Right. Okay. Um, so. Oh, so the the shell is based off of an extrusion from the master sketch. Yes. Okay. All right. I thought the extrusion from the master sketch is meant to represent the gears and things. No, like that. no. Yeah. The extrusion from the master sketch is it's meant to represent the shell. Is meant to represent this, like. And then the shell provides the actual like gearbox shelling. Yes. Okay. So you extrude that, and the shell is just like, when you extrude it, you're left with a solid body, and the shell just like lets you take it, and instead of it being a solid block, it takes it, and now you have this. And imagine like the other half of the gear box is like, like that, and now you have like your gear box. In. Yes. So. Okay. So are your bearing features here? Are these um, extrusions on after you shell? So I'm imagining that the bearings themselves stick out a little bit more than the gears 
anyway, so the shell feature would automatically make that, but I'm imagining it thicken, we thicken additionally. So one way to do this is imagine I removed all of the holes here and I made this perfectly flat here. Mm -hmm. And this side looked like make this, like I put in these bearing pockets already. Right. And um, so there's like whole challenges in CAD that you'll learn once you get into like what order do I do things. Yeah. Because if you come in here and you extrude this bearing pocket and then you try and make a shell feature, yeah. you'll be left with a wall right here. Yeah. So what order you do things matters. Um, you could just make this all flat. You just have it for the gears. You shell it. And then like as you do these things, it's like extrude, like you extrude the mass and then you extrude a hole for the bearing. Mm -hmm. And... There's a whole bunch of things there that um, happen with process. I would say if, oh, those pins are too big for this hole. That is, um, hmm? mm -hmm. this pin is too big for the hole. You can see where it's punched the gear box out there. Oh, mm -hmm. do do. Hmm. Or too long. Um, too wide. Too wide. Or we messed it up when we were trying to take it out. But I think you just take a file to it and it should be okay. Um, yeah. bird. So I think what actually makes the most sense is when you're up in this master sketch, you define where all of your bolt holes are. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So basically, you want bolt holes as close to as close together as possible mm -hmm. while keeping relatively a similar, like we currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, wait, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We currently have ten. You want them to be as evenly spaced as possible without creating a lot of additional geometry. So like, it might be that equally spaced would put one right there. But now suddenly the stock you need to make the gear box out of is bigger. And that point now might intersect with the engine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is something that's helpful to do in the master sketch because you have this engine blocked out lightly. Um, so you come around and you think about like, you can kind of see on here like, I'll do it kind of to the camera, okay, so sure. that, but y'all can also see of like they were put here and here, which is the closest around this gear that made sense, but added the least amount of material. Right. Okay. Um, is there a code feature that just goes a certain depth based on like wherever it hits? Like if it was to cut this, it would go six millimeters past this down, six millimeters past this surface down, and then like that. Like a, something that, that takes sense. a certain amount off of the surface? Yes. Like but not, in a smart way? It's not like one flat plane, but it does... Like you might design. just have to do a couple different extrudes. That's... Yeah. That's I mean, you can do it off of one sketch and then just do extrude off the one sketch with like selecting geometry. Yeah, there's a lot of different things, and I think a lot of those things come down to your personal CAD style. Mm. Like, there's... There's hundreds of different ways to CAD this gear box in SolidWorks and come out with the same thing based on order that you do it, um, like ways you define sketches, how you define other things, and there's definitely ways that are better than some. Like, it would not be fun to basically do a whole bunch of, ex like, if you started and then you did, like, like a lot like when you start doing you want to have as few operations as possible in CAD but you will have more than I like you will it won't be the most efficient because it's going to be your first time doing it and yeah um I'm complaining about molds in SolidWorks I guess 
Were you last semester DFM turnout or were you Max's? I do not take DFM. No. What? No. What was your Mackie death? What? What was your Mackie death? Um. FEA, PDOs, <laughs> controls. <laughs> Is it too late for me to drop you? <laughs> uh, uh, you can do pass no grade up until pass no credit. Pat, yeah. Are you about to fail? Because then you're gonna need it next year. I don't think you can drop. I you might be able to drop it right now. I don't know. I mean, if you, I feel like the way the school works is if you beg hard enough, something will happen. They also already put in like special <laughs> circumstances for this semester, so also this is all gonna be included. Oh, yeah. so, oh. Woo! We're gonna remember Ricky's senior year. Zach, I love you, but I'm failing your class. <laughs> I don't think Zach will ever be watching this while I'm Unless we kill him. Ah. <laughs> okay. Green. So, like, in this master sketch, you come around and you define your points. Mm. And, like, and two other things that are important that you can see on here are we have these um, pinholes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you need to include those as well. And those are something where it's super nice if these pinholes are on the same, um, same height from the bottom. Uh-huh. Because you would just pretty much uh, straight across do one hole through the other. Theoretically, it's like not a huge design thing either way, because likely this is all done CNC. Yeah. But it is like nominally nice to have those at the same height because they are your alignment holes. Right. You want those to be as far apart as possible while being like this is like this distance here is relatively far apart. Mm -hmm. Like you just want them to be as far apart because then this face and those two pins define your plane. Um, oh God. the other features on here are you have your two mounting holes, which might get defined later, might get defined sooner. And then you have your two brake mount holes, which will likely get defined later. Right. Um, Was a, brake mount holes? A brake mount? the brakes mount to here. Okay. But I don't think that'll be on that, this, one. On that one. Yeah. Oh, it will not be the same next year. We probably same. won't have any brakes mounting to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, if we do have brakes mounting to it, something's either gone really wrong or really right. Yeah, you're not going to have brakes hey, mounting to us. it. Which is... Yeah. Which is... Yeah, so... Unless you're doing inboard brakes. We're not doing inboard brakes, because that would... I don't think that would be... Oh, yeah. it, and they'd oh, also yeah, be yeah. on the deck. Oh, my God. But imagine He's braking like sand on the drive shafts. Oh, God. <laughs> no, we, that seen, sounds horrible. Don't knock it till you try it. So, you don't have to worry about stopping. Why are you touching me? <laughs> <laughs> and you guys will all have very interesting <laughs> mounting <laughs> patterns <laughs> next year. Like, everything. So, this is a great walkthrough on Master Sketch for Gearbox. It yeah. will be very different next year because. If you're doing the beveled gearbox, it's going to be like 3D. Yep. Oh, God. <laughs> there, there just appear to be more reasons not to really do the beveled gearbox next year. I well, feel like doing that's going to be fun. But the other one is also but not But the ideal. differentials in the future. <laughs> that's like a side upgrade. Also, it's right, not now, that worth it. right now, there's five people here. Exactly. Drivetrain in the past, when I designed a gearbox, was two, two and a half people. <laughs> oh, don't worry, it'll shrink next year. Probably, <laughs> honestly. If you don't show up, I'm going to kill you. Except that is <laughs> not going to be here gonna next year. Who's going to hunt you up? Who's going to ditch drivetrain for suspension? No, we're just going to get drunk one Friday and turn it up for roulette. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, future us. Is it a good time to stop the video? <laughs> <laughs> Like, when we look back, when the, those of us who survived look back on this. <laughs> that joke didn't age well. What, if, I'm going to design this in a day. No no sleep, no rest, just, just go. Yeah. So this took, this took me a semester mm -hmm. plus winter break to do. Mm -hmm. I feel like I want to say that it'll take less time with more people, but also I think that 
chatting with multiple people, especially on something this complicated, so sounds pain. like hell. Right. So one thought we had of if we did a federal here, Bob, it would not be as efficient to, like, as materially efficient, but we had thought about breaking it into two gear boxes uh -huh. because then two people can work, like one person is making the gear box for the bevel gears, one person is making a gear box for the two normal gears. And still that's like is the is the fact that two people can work in parallel with the fact that we have a bastard gear box. Well it would be a bastard gear box the other like <laughs> it, it might simplify things and it might actually mean less material. And two people working on it at once means yes. like that's a decent bit of like that's a pretty decent thing. We're also gonna have prop shaft in all of jo those joints next year. Prop shaft support, all like a lot of a lot of reconsideration of shaft design. So like, and gear light waiting is gonna be happening. So there's like not gonna be a shortage of tasks. I guess we need five people. This Unless is a I good time of Baja days. to have five people. On so yeah. imagine Anna will be here, and there's like you will likely have some face years. Oh no! Uh, minions, oh. literally. <laughs> so yeah. like, I don't think that helps. I think that makes it worse. Yeah, there's gonna be. It's like they can do a... like they can do like the prop shaft. They can do the filing. Filing for me. questions. Like, I don't no, know. Like, Prop shaft restraints are going to be a great thing for first years to look at. Yeah. Or like, what a great first year second semester tasks are great sophomore first semester tasks. Like first year second semester versus sophomore first semester is like, yeah. it'll take the freshman longer, but like, doable. It, yeah. it's doable. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember what else is important to talk about here. I um, think that just having like a kind of step by step checklist ish, just general. Oh, way. That, uh, you want to tilt it over here? Sure. Like, the fact that this magnet doesn't stick all the way out is fine when it That's comes fine because there's oil down there. And it's uh, flowing, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And plus, like, I don't know, the shavings will find their way there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Maybe. So, well, the big things that you want to keep in mind is like, Wherever this is, um, like, so one thing that came up was, if you look right here, this gear goes like that. So this plug was thought that it was going to be down on this surface. Um, so the, pro so, but there was, the reason why that didn't happen is because this plug, the hardware itself got put into CAD, which I highly recommend doing because... Like, you put the hardware in CAD, and then I was like, what is the size of a, um, whatever, 14, I believe this takes a 14 millimeter socket. Can you actually put it on Can I actually put it on there? And the answer was like, eh, not really. <laughs> right, right. So the right thing to do was to bump this out so that we can easily get a tool on there. Yeah. So, like actually keeping in mind what your hardware is and putting your hardware in here no doubt yeah. and then additionally putting in at points where you think it might be tight putting in tools yeah download tools from the master um like the other thing that came in was not on the skew box but on trip skew box you'll notice that this piece here is mickey mouse so this comes out and these bolts, instead of being on this surface, are up on this bearing surface mm -hmm. for a similar reason. Like, um, because here the bolt heads do, like, can get down here, yeah. but in the other ones they couldn't. Right. So you bump it up to the next surface and that tiny bit of material is with the, like, downsides of not being able to get there. Right. Um, is there an advantage to having more space inside the gearbox to hold oil? Like, is there like a minimum volume in there that we need to have? Um, right now, we have not been considering that. Yeah. We have not done really any considerations of oil. Okay. Um, and that's just something that like, if we, so right now, this V2 here is for a tachometer. Right. Um, which for this to work, you need there to be lightweighted gears that go past this. Yep. Um, 
in the past, we have also used a temperature sensor. Mm -hmm. That was when the, the gearbox was wider, and we had that basically as the gearbox got thinner, like if you compare this to like the gearbox over there, it's like significantly skinny. Right. Um, basically, that temperature sensor doesn't fit in here anymore. So we'd have to find a new one. And you'd use that temperature sensor data to get an idea of like how much oil and like is the oil getting hot? Yeah. Then like you need to put more oil in. Right, right. Um, and there might be a lot more things in there of like how much oil should you be doing. Right now it's just been I I fill it enough. I asked Stephen Stephen how much oil goes in the gearbox and he's like ah uh, somewhere in between these two lines on the bottle and I'm like. Okay. 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 Just pour it till it don't pour no more. No. No? No. Because you want there to be a little air in it or something? Yeah, because, well, because that oil is going to, like, thick. it's thick. You want it to coat the gears to lubricate it, but you don't want to be, like, having to move that oil with the teeth. So, like, I'd say maybe up to, like, here feels right. Mm. Okay. Do we have to consider, like... Actually, no. I guess if it's hitting one gear, it's going to hit all the gears eventually. Yeah. If it's viscous so enough. If it's viscous. Well, I think... I think this is worth looking into next year, because it might be that you need it to go up high enough to meet... It's got to hit the no. gear. No, because this gear meshes with the biggest one here, yeah. which means it's going to get it. And this small gear here, even if it doesn't hit the oil, meshes with this big gear here. That right. But, like, I think doing some, re like, if you're interested in it, spend a night researching how much oil to put in a gearbox and you'll know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, right, we were going to... time? List time. List time. To-do list. Or even just checklist time. So, like, <laughs> I'll start with one list, which is just features you need on a gearbox. Gotcha. So... So features on gearbox, you need the gears, you need the bearings, um, you need bolts, um, with, with lock washers and washers. The largest tractor which might be worth looking into, but like you need to bolt it together. You need gearbox clearance holes or gearbox mount clearance holes. It's the X7. And in here, you're also going to want um, it's like that torque. <laughs> When your grass Which, is really thick, and you're like driving up a very steep hill. I'm changing this to be bolt. Like, mm -hmm. so one side clearance, one side tap, um, clamp, clamp the bolts. And you need gearbox mount holes, and you need alignment. Yes. Is that also a standard part, or is it something we? Additional thing you need is oil, fill, and oil drain plugs. You need a like pressure release. Kind of Which is a dip breather. Not like yeah. a, but we, do we have used other things in the past, but we've had success with dip breathers. Um, so what is a dip breather? A dip breather is yeah, it's, it's this little accordion, black accordion oh, plastic that's what thing. That is. So the air inside the gearbox heats up and expands. <laughs> and basically, if you don't have a way for it to expand, it, um, it will become like a pressure bomb. And pressure bomb. Oh, that sounds fun. 
It might not ever like actually explode, but it would have a lot of extra places on things. Some really hot oil. Yeah, so you need that, and then you also, in the past, we have used a um, tachometer. And then potential other senses. The other thing that I forgot to say is you need very So this is like nominally everything you need on there. Um, <laughs> order that you do the key box. Just a general framework. Yeah. I still have the drink. So like we start with the master sketchy stuff and extrude to the shell. Is there like like extrude on either side, make the shell based off of like what we know is gonna go there. And make shell. Then you take care of bearings. When you say take care of bearings, do you mean add bearings to the shell, or do you mean like add the thickness of wall? At, like you add those in there, and at the same time, like you start with the master sketch, and then you make pipes, and then you put the pipes in an assembly. Because while you can work on each half of the gearbox independently, it like you need all of this to be in an assembly. So when we're making the master sketch, is that in the part file that's eventually going to become the two halves of the no, box? Because you 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 want this to be its own part file and then okay. you Yikes, that hurts. Drive the sketch off of that, yeah. which is a kind of weird yeah. solid looks thing. What do you mean derive the sketch off of it? I forget it. Oh, like, I know how to do it. I don't know how. I don't know what the feature is exactly. Called. Okay, yeah, but like describe what you do. Like, yeah. do you just copy, paste, and then edit that file? So basically, you'll make you'll make a file for this. You'll start a sketch in it, and you'll make that sketch to your master. Like, you'll make an assembly with your master sketch and the sketch for this part. Hmm. Like the sketch for that part, I thought that part was just an extrusion of the master sketch that was like extruded at different points to different lengths. So the way you do, so the way you do this is you make the master sketch in a pipe. Yeah. And then you make an assembly that contains the master sketch, this half of the gearbox, and this half of the gearbox. But how did you make those two halves of the gearbox? Yep. So in making these halves, you start with you basically make two sketch parts or like simple like extrude a cylinder like anything to make you be able to have a sketch part and then you come in and you put them in an assembly with here and you basically make the origins of the sketch together and then you delete all the features you had for the cylinder and convert this sketch into these pipe files so that I, that's something where it's just going to be like, talk to Anna, talk, like message me next year and I can do a walkthrough of how to do that. Gotcha. We can just zoom and share screen and you can take control and show you which things you're talking about. Yeah. But it's, I can throw an expo right here. It is. Okay. Um, it's it's the idea on. of you basically you don't want to extrude the master sketch because you can only extrude it once. And you don't want to have be, basically you want to preserve the master sketch. Okay. And if you're, edit, if you're making a part in it, there's potential that things get messed up. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. And if we, oh, we want to make the master, like we want to link the two files. You, you link much? these two files to the master sketch. And then you basically convert all of the entities in the master sketch. You like highlight all of it, click convert entities, and now those now that sketch is copied into this part, into this part, and you can now extrude that sketch in a part separate than the master sketch. I feel like this is too solid work to be This. 
I like that I, I can happen really like understand what, what is happening. Yes. But continue. Then. You prayed about it, you can now think about it for yeah. next year. I will now know what to look at. Yes. Okay. That's so, what I want to get. So like time. master sketch and then make shell um derive from I have your phone. You do have my phone. It's so small. Yeah, I know, right? That's crazy. Oh, yeah. So you those parts from huh? I have your phone. Right. Uh, we'll and you oh, use oh. Damn. 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 <laughs> You use <laughs> Then you take care of the berries and then I say video. next is like uh, in video. <laughs> Um, and then... Hey, uh, are you forgetting something? You're supposed to write something here. Okay. Like, and this is going to have a lot of, like, shape modifications. <laughs> I just realized there's the like, a <laughs> Yeah, I used it then. Wait, where's the ex part for extrusion? Is that so after the mass? Are you talking about extrusion this for the is, shell? This is like That's a very yeah. broad oh, map of how you do that. I think the extrusion stuff comes before make shell. Yeah. Like the, yes, yes. by making shell, I mean like that extrusion. whole thing is like okay. making a very simple shell of the game. Hmm. Once you have that shell, take care of the bearings. Once the bearings are taken care of, take care of your bolt holes, like your external bolt holes. Um, then, like, in that, you're going to have some shape modifications and, like, all of those things. And then your extra features come at the end. The other feature that needs to happen in here that I had forgotten about is your O-ring groove. O-ring groove. Yeah. So, this is a very loose outline of how you do the gearbox, but it does give you... Some initial it's stepping things. stones. Yes. Like it's the steps. You put That's what those I extra have. features in the master sketch, right? So it uh, applies to. So yes. <laughs> anything. Only put things in the master sketch if they pertain to both and are important to the alignment. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, can you hand me one of the gear box hats? So like, um, because it matters to alignment, all of these holes on this face here in the master sketch. Right. The gears are in the master yeah, sketch. Um, because it doesn't matter to alignment, and like this feature doesn't exist on the other side, so this is not in the master sketch. I see. Okay. This is not in the master mm. sketch. This is not in the master sketch. Um, you can, if you want, put like these in the master sketch because they will exist on the other side, but because they're not dependent, like, because these features don't interface with any features on the other side, it, like, is less important to put it in there. Um, things you will want in the master sketch is, like, this internal profile here. And, like, this... Ex Basically, what's in the master sketch could pretty much be this, like, this exact face here with both the inner edge and the outer edge. Um, and then you'll also have, because you made the design to it, you'll have, like, your gears and some of those things. But, like, it doesn't matter what, like, don't crowd the master sketch to put in things that only are important on one side. Because the master sketch will get busy very quickly. Master sketch is just for, like, gears. Just for major Ma Master sketches for any geometry that pertains to both sides. Okay. So stuff that, like... So... Like those, like, in this term, it would be, like, this gear, this gear, and this gear? No, uh, uh, well, so I'm putting in... Um, you gotta put it back. Nope, nope, nope. Is it, like, nope. horizontal stuff, pretty much? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is? Nope. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Oh, no. Oh, 
potentially, <laughs> maybe, but not likely. And this is like, oh, but you know, maybe. And this is like but some years not necessarily need to go in the master sketch, like the small ones. No, on they the... do because um, they do because you have to align pitch diameter. So you oh, use okay, the, so even the small gears need to go on there so you yes. can align everything. All gears okay. are in the bearings are potentially in there, but not likely. Yes. Like that, like these are two options. Like they do exist on both sides and are the same. So they are shared. Okay. But they are not critical. Like they're they're not mission critical stuff. Yeah. So bearings. Like, they're not mission critical. These are all the features that, like, it is important that the gear box aligns perfectly. Yes. Okay. So, like, that is also a helpful thing in there. Of, like, this is what you put in the master stack. Why did you include the bearing press out bolts? Uh, be because uh, you don't you don't need them. Like, I'd say probably that's something I wouldn't do, but they do... You do have them on both sides, so it's like, yeah, I'd say probably not. Okay. Um, the other thing that I would just have in the master sketch is like full, like full face um, geometry. When you say full face geometry, what do you mean? Full uh, connection, connecting face. Well, my bad. Which is like the full connecting face is you want the full geometry of this. Oh, that okay. stuff. Okay. That exact face, not the O-ring group, but, but like it's gonna go on both sides. So. The O-ring group it doesn't. O-ring group only goes on one. No, I'm saying I'm saying like this face will go yeah. on both sides. This face goes on both sides yes. and is exactly the same, so you want it to exist on both parts. Yeah. Okay. What do you think of? If you had a hole here that was slightly smaller than this race, so it's like in like somewhere right here rather than having you. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Those holes are very minimally used. Like I have not used them while I've been here, but it's just just in case. Just in case. It's like an oh shit oh. hole. You don't want to not have it. Oh shit! Thing that you also want to have is if you take a look here and uh, feel right there. Are you talking about the little, the little space depression? So that little depression there, so that these bearings of the ones we've used in the past have been theoretically flat. So, um, like, this would rub against the inner race, or against that side of the gearbox okay, and cause friction. So, you want it to make sure so can you hold? How much of a right here? Um, bearing. Uh, and how oh. that's just like a tiny like can you see that so oh. it's a teensy teensy pocket it's like very small i'd say maybe you want to aim on like the order of like 0.05 or something 0.05 put like 0.03 to 0.05 that's like a such a minor thing yeah. like but just make sure it's there. But make sure it's there because it would suck to have to put the gearbox back on the mill to jig it to do those features. Right. Yeah, it would because it would be all circling. Yeah. Precision um, sounds bad. Um, how do you do, like, like, if you were to take this off the mill and you wanted to put it back on, how do you realign everything? Alignment pins? Uh, we have the gearbox mount plate. Oh, okay. And that plate has these alignment pins. Mm hmm and it has the bolt holes, and that, that plate also has one additional pin in it that is made for a gauge pin, that the shop has a whole bunch of gauge pins that are, basically they have a pin for every measurement you can get up to half an inch. So zero, like yeah. they start maybe at like 0 0.050, 0 0.051, 0 0.052, 0 0.053. Mm -hmm. So you would choose like whatever size reamer the shop might have. A reamer is like a, like you drill a hole and then you use the reamer and it makes like a very precise hole. So you might use a reamer for a half inch hole and then you use that. 
We, we use that to do what? Uh, sorry, you use the V-May to make a half inch hole and when you, like, you mount the U-Box to that plate like, with the alignment pins in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you yeah. use something called a dial indicator that lets you like center the mill on that point and you call that point your origin. Oh, so that, is that origin point on the actual? It's, it's on that plate. That plate, okay. Is yeah. it something physical you can see? The... The, that location? Um, we can go look at the plate over here. Which might lose to the recording, but I don't think we're going to be talking about it. Happy or upset? Hungry? 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 We won't lose the recording, not on my watch. <laughs> so the origin exists right at the center of this hole. Okay, so there's, there's, a, there's some sort of special tool.